Hello and welcome to Electrology. In today's video, we'll explore the concept of bus bar protection in power systems. We'll cover what bus bar protection is, how it works, and go through the different schemes used to protect bus bars from electrical faults. By the end of this video, you'll have a detailed understanding of why bus bar protection is critical for maintaining the reliability and stability of power systems. So let's get started. Bus bar protection is a protective scheme designed to safeguard the bus bar from electrical faults. A bus bar serves as a central point in a power system where multiple feeders are connected through circuit breakers. Different configurations, such as a double bus bar arrangement or a one and a half breaker scheme, can be used to connect feeders to the bus bar. The primary purpose of a bus bar is to enhance the reliability of the power system, ensuring power is evacuated and distributed even if a feeder trips due to a fault. To understand this in detail, consider a single bus to which four feeders are connected. Here, feeder 1 is the generator feeder, meaning that the power generated is delivered to the remaining feeders, feeder 2, 3 and 4. In case of a fault on any feeder, say feeder 2, the circuit breaker 2 which is associated with that feeder will trip. When this happens, the generator power will continue to be evacuated through the bus bar by feeder 3 and 4, thereby maintaining the stability of the generator. However, if all three feeders, feeder 2, 3 and 4, trip simultaneously, the generated power cannot be evacuated. Under such a situation, the power station will either operate on house load or trip its generator. From this discussion, it's clear that a bus bar configuration significantly contributes to the reliability of the power system by allowing continued power evacuation despite certain feeder faults. Now, let's focus on bus bar protection. Suppose a fault occurs directly on the bus, as shown on the screen. To protect the bus from such faults, it is essential to disconnect it from all connected power sources immediately. This requires opening all circuit breakers associated with the bus circuit breaker 1, 2, 3 and 4. It might seem logical to open only circuit breaker 1 which connects the generator feeder but this is not sufficient. Feeders 2, 3 and 4 are also connected to the grid, an extensive power source capable of sustaining the fault. Therefore, to effectively isolate the bus bar in the event of a bus fault, all circuit breakers associated with the feeders must open. This functional requirement of bus bar protection is critical because it ensures the disconnection of all feeders in the case of a bus bar fault, preventing further damage and enhancing system reliability. In summary, bus bar protection is vital as it promptly isolates the bus bar and disconnects all connected feeders during a fault, maintaining the stability and integrity of the power system. The bus bar protection scheme employs a bus bar differential relay 87, which can be either a high impedance or low impedance differential relay. This differential relay is designed to detect faults occurring on the bus. To understand bus bar protection more effectively, let's examine it within the context of a one and a half breaker scheme. In this configuration, two main buses, bus 1 and bus 2 are present. In each diagonal, two feeders are connected to these buses through two main circuit breakers and one tie circuit breaker, as you can see. In this setup, circuit breaker A and B act as the main circuit breakers while C serves as the tiebreaker. Here, feeders 1 and 4 are connected to bus 1 and bus 2, respectively. In this arrangement, separate bus bar protection schemes are required for each bus to safeguard both bus 1 and bus 2. The protection implemented for bus 1 is referred to as Zone 1 bus bar protection, and the protection for bus 2 is known as Zone 2 bus bar protection. Since the protection schemes for Zone 1 and Zone 2 are identical in function and design, we'll focus solely on Zone 1 bus bar protection for clarity. Upon closely observing this bus arrangement, you will notice that two current transformer cores are installed just after every main circuit breaker. This is for reliability. The secondary windings of these CTs of each vertical are connected in parallel and then they connect to the relay with a resistance in series in a high impedance differential scheme as shown in the screen. When configuring high impedance bus bar protection, special attention must be given to the polarity of the CT connections. Incorrect polarity can cause the relay to operate even under normal conditions, 
leading to unintended tripping. To better understand the functionality of a bus bar differential protection scheme, let's consider two cases to see how the relay responds in each situation. In this scenario, a fault occurs in feeder 1, causing the fault current to be supplied by all connected feeders. The flow of current through each feeder is indicated by a thin dotted blue line on the screen. It's evident that the combined current from feeder 2 and feeder 3 is flowing through the CT1A but in the opposite direction, moving from terminal 1P2 toward terminal 1P1. By applying Kirchhoff's current law, we can get the sum of the currents from feeders 1, 2 and 3 resulting in a net current of 0. As a result, no current flows through the differential relay, keeping the bus bar differential relay in a stable condition, meaning it will not operate or trip under this fault condition in feeder 1. Now, let's consider a fault occurring directly on bus 1. The current flow feeding this bus fault is represented by an orange colored dotted line on the screen. In this case, currents of varying magnitudes flow through CT1A, CT2A and CT3A all in the same direction, from terminal P1 to terminal P2. As a result, the sum of the currents from feeders 1, 2 and 3 will not equal zero. This creates a net current equal to the fault current, represented as fault current equals the sum of currents from feeders 1, 2 and 3. This net current, which is equivalent to the fault current, flows through the differential relay, causing the bus bar differential relay to activate. Upon activation, the relay issues a trip command to all circuit breakers connected to bus 1, namely circuit breaker 1A, 2A and 3A. To enhance the reliability of bus bar protection, two CT cores are provided. This setup creates two protection zones, the main zone and the check zone. For the bus bar protection to operate, both the main zone and check zone protections must be activated. This design helps to prevent any spurious operation of the bus bar protection system. Since bus bar protection results in the complete disconnection of all connected feeders, it is crucial to prevent any accidental or unintended activation of this protection relay. To minimize the risk of spurious operation, a dual zone setup is implemented, comprising the main zone and check zone for each protection zone. Zone 1 for bus 1 and zone 2 for bus 2. This setup is achieved using two different cores of the same CT. The wiring and protection scheme are designed such that the bus bar protection will only activate if both the main zone and check zone relays operate simultaneously. This coordination is accomplished through a DC control scheme, which ensures that the bus bar protection relay only trips under confirmed fault conditions, effectively enhancing the system's reliability and security. You can see the DC scheme incorporated in bus bar differential protection. While the actual scheme may vary, this example demonstrates a typical setup to meet the functional requirements of bus bar protection. Two selection switches, CSA and CSCH, are included in the scheme. The CSA switch is used to take the main zone bus bar protection out of service. When CSA is operated, it shorts and bypasses the main zone CT cores. Similarly, operating the CSCH switch shorts and bypasses the check zone CT cores, allowing the check zone to be taken out of service. When both CSA and CSCH are in service and both the main zone bus bar protection relay 8721 and the check zone bus bar protection relay 872 operate, relay 96 is energized as the positive and negative supplies are extended to it. Once Relay 96 is energized, its output contacts change from normally open to closed, allowing current to flow to the breaker trip coils TC1 and TC2. Consequently, energizing Relay 96 trips the breaker. Since a 96 relay is provided for each feeder, all feeder breakers will trip through their respective 96 relays. For simplicity, only one 96 relay corresponding to one feeder is shown in the DC scheme. Now, let's consider a scenario where preventive maintenance is needed on the main zone bus bar differential relay, 87-1. To perform this, the main zone bus bar protection can be taken out of service by operating the CSA switch. Now, suppose a bus fault occurs while the main zone relay is out of service. In this case, 
when the check zone bus bar differential relay 87 to 2 operates, relay 96 is still actuated because the negative supply is provided by the operation of 87, 2, and the positive supply remains active through CSA being in the out position. This allows the bus bar protection to activate and isolate the bus in the event of a fault, even if the main zone relay is out of service. A similar response occurs if the check zone bus bar differential relay is taken out of service and a bus fault occurs. An additional relay, 50Z, is also present in the DC scheme. This relay functions as the local breaker backup relay. You may wonder why the LBB relay contacts are integrated into the bus bar differential protection scheme. This is because if a fault occurs on a feeder and its main breaker such as circuit breaker 1A fails to open, this condition essentially behaves like a bus fault as the bus remains connected to the feeder fault via the stuck closed main breaker. To isolate this fault when a main breaker is stuck closed, it is essential to open the tie breaker and all feeders connected to the bus. For this reason, the LBB relay contacts of all main breakers are wired into the bus bar protection DC scheme. The DC scheme shows that when the LBB relay contacts operate, relay 96 is actuated thereby tripping all breakers connected to the bus. And that wraps up our detailed explanation of bus bar protection schemes. As you've seen, bus bar protection is essential for isolating faults quickly and protecting the entire power system. If you found this video informative, please consider hitting the like button, sharing this video and subscribing to our channel, Electrology. Don't forget to click the thanks button if this video helped you. And you can support us further by becoming a channel member with the join button. Got questions or comments? Leave them below and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.